it looks like another of our old heavy industries is set to disappear. After losing coal mining and shipbuilding, are we now about to say ta-ta to the British steel industry? By the time you watch this, we might know whether the government or a new white knight will ride to the rescue of Tata steel operations in the UK and the 15,000 jobs that depend on them. It's getting ugly, with ministers accused of being asleep at the wheel and even of having resisted anti-dumping laws that would have imposed punitive tariffs on the cheap Chinese steel at the heart of the issue. Business Secretary Sajid Javid was in Sydney extolling the benefits of free markets when news broke that Tata was selling its UK business or closing it down if there were no takers. Their appointment of PwC suggests that the business may be going into administration. Tata's finance director, Kushik Chatterjee, has paid almost weekly visits to the government to tell them just how bad the situation is, but no constructive response has been forthcoming. More damaging, perhaps, are accusations from France and Italy that the UK resisted retaliatory tariffs from the EU, similar to those applied in that other bastion of free enterprise, America. David Cameron and George Osborne have been bending over backwards to curry favour with the Chinese, which perhaps explains their reticence to apply trade barriers for the steel industry. There are similarities to the oil industry, where Saudi Arabia is flooding the world with oil at prices well below its own cost of production, simply to bankrupt the embryonic US shale oil industry. The accusation is that Beijing is dumping heavily subsidised steel onto world markets to kill off the competition as it struggles to cope with its own economic slowdown. You could even liken it to the competitive currency devaluations we're seeing in Japan and Europe as central bank money printing and unfeasibly low interest rates put further dampeners on economic growth. When politics interferes with free markets, the distortions can be brutal and can take decades to work their way through the system. Will the government rush to bail out steel the way it did the broken banks in 2008? Don't hold your breath. Should they do something? I fear not. The problem is a truly global one with no easy answers. China expects half a million of its own steel jobs to disappear in the next five years, and its need for steel has already peaked and there's huge overcapacity. Just as Harry Dent said at the Elite Investor Summit, there are hundreds of thousands of Chinese who've come in from the fields to live in high-rise apartments in big cities but have got no work to do. How can this play out other than with a major economic crash? A few billion in steel subsidies feels like a, a finger in the dam trying to hold back the Yangtze River. There are towns in northeast England that have yet to recover from pit closures in the 1980s and 90s. There'll be more of the same when the full economic impact is felt in Port Talbot, Scunthorpe or Shotton. Zero hours part-time checkout jobs will not replace the incomes of skilled foundry workers. However, if you try to calculate the scale of investment that would be needed to retain these jobs, there must be a more constructive way of investing the same amount in retraining and replacing an industry whose time has been and gone. Overall, North East England seems like a prosperous place whenever I return there. It's a services-led economy and it's triggered lots of new property development, new cars in every driveway, bars and restaurants that are packed to the gunnels most nights of the week. Maybe the biggest thing we're lacking is political vision and leadership. You wouldn't have to be Einstein to have foreseen challenges ahead for the UK steel industry at any time in the last decade or two. What a pity that Tata's announcement appears to have hit the government like a bolt from the blue. If you expect a workable policy for heavy industry in a government run by a PR man and a wallpaper shop owner, be very careful out there. Final scourge of productivity is personal. I blame social media for the biggest time vampire of all, distraction.